So we actually have two additional elements that we'd like to place on here. One of them is a paragraph of journaling, and one of them is a little date right down here. So what we can do now is switch back over to the layer just above this one. Here's where the layers palette really comes in handy. If I were to grab my type tool and start typing here, all of my words would end up underneath our layout. So I need to actually click on the layout layer so that Photoshop creates that type in the right place. Otherwise, it will be below our layout and we won't be able to see it. So let's go ahead and click on our layout layer and we'll grab our horizontal type tool. That's this big T right here. So once that's selected, we're going to get some options in our options bar. And depending on your version of Photoshop, that may either be at the top of your screen or at the bottom. For this version of Photoshop Elements, our options are at the bottom. So let's go ahead and just click on this tool options right down here. There it is. And this gives us a series of different parameters that we can set to make our typing look really cool. Let's go ahead and start with our date. That's all the way down here. We can go ahead and zoom in with our mouse -to scroll wheel and kind of reposition stuff here. So we can see that pretty well. And let's go ahead and click down inside of that font selector. So a lot of these parameters you probably recognize if you've ever used a word processing program. We have the ability to select what kind of font and how big, what color it is, whether we want it left or center or right aligned, and some other options. For the most part, many of the options you'll recognize. So let's go ahead and choose a font now. I have a lot of fonts installed, so we're going to choose the impact font. So there are a couple ways we can get there. We can either pop up this box right here with the little, little drop down, in which case all five million of my fonts, I'm exaggerating, all many, many of my fonts will appear here and I can scroll down and pick impact. Or we can actually just click down in this box and just start typing IMP and it will get you pretty close to there. So if I know what font I want, I'll typically just click down in here and start typing. So the last thing that we want to do here is just to set the color. Let's go ahead and set the size too. So we've got our impact font set, and now we want to set the size. And this is something that kind of varies depending on the font itself. So most of the time I'm just going to kind of toss out a size that I think might be good, and then it's very easy to resize that. So let's try 30 points here, and then we can click down to create our cursor. Now one additional item that we can do here is go ahead and set the color. I would like for us to type in white. So let's go ahead and click on our little color swatch here. And we've got color swatches in here and white is one of the colors. So if you want to type in black or in white, you can pick that from here. In other versions of Photoshop, you're given this little color wheel which you might recognize and this is our standard color picker. We're going to be talking a lot about this in our class because this is really the way that we can access all of the colors of the rainbow. So in order to pick white from here you just click in this very top left hand corner and you'll get white. So we'll click OK and now back to our date we can type whatever we would like here. So I'm going to say 09 12. Now we can commit that change or we can simply come up to our move tool and that commits the change for us. So this is a little too large for what I what I want for this to be. It's kind of hanging out over the tag. So we can actually resize this exactly the same way that we would resize our photograph or any other object. Just click down on the corner of it and start to resize. And again, full version you're going to have to hold down shift. When you're happy with the sizing there, we can kind of drag it over a little bit. Then we go ahead and hit enter to commit that change. The nice thing about resizing type like this is that 
we never have to go back down to the type options and say, oh, 30 wasn't good enough, let's try 26. Oh, that's not good enough, let's try 24. We can actually size that visually and it doesn't really matter what size it is. I really like that a lot. So one thing I wanted to point out here is that Photoshop is smart about creating new layers when we do new type. So you can see that we now have three layers in our layers palette now. One of them is our type, which is indicated by this T thumbnail right here. And if you ever see a piece of type that you want to edit, so say you misspelled something or you want to put it in a different font, you can just click down on this T, double click, and you'll get into the edit mode for that particular layer of type. Then to get back out, just click on your move tool. So now let's move up to our journaling area. Here's one quick way that you can navigate around when you're zoomed in on your layout like this. You can hold down your space bar. You can see that my cursor now turns into one of those grabby hands and I can simply click and push to be able to move around. So that's always the space bar no matter what tool you're in. Now let's grab our horizontal type tool again and we can keep our size and our color the same. Let's go ahead and change the font though. I'm going to click down in that font selector and let's go ahead and type Century Gothic. You can also type Gil Sans, anything that's going to be Arial, anything that's going to be a pretty simple sans serif font. So I'm going to type Century Gothic, C-E-N, and it comes up for me right here. And then I can just hit my tab key to get out of there. Now let's go ahead and actually change the size of this. I like a 12 point font here. Now rather than just clicking down to create a cursor, we're actually going to click and drag to create a text box. So we'll just click down with that little I-beam cursor and create our text box. Now we're going to be typing in our 14 point font in white and Century Gothic. Now we can actually close this so we can see a little bit better. And now all we need to do is type our paragraph of journaling. Now when you're happy with that, we can go ahead and commit that by grabbing our move tool. And then this paragraph becomes just like any other layer in our Photoshop document. So if we wanted, we can kind of orient this towards the top or we can put it right in the middle. And these lines here are subtle enough that it doesn't really matter how close to the lines we really are. Later on in our course, I'll show you how to actually make journaling fit on specified journaling lines. But for now, let's go ahead and just create our paragraph and then we can zoom out to see how we've done. Go ahead and zoom out. Beautiful. So, in just those steps, we've been able to complete an entire digital scrapbook page. Now it comes time to save. Saving is a really important and sometimes kind of confusing aspect of creating digital scrapbook pages. Basically, what we want to do here is save in three different ways, depending on what we want to use this the final file for. So, we want to save first our PSD file. PSD is Photoshop's native file format. So this means that you're going to be able to save all of these layers that we have worked that we have worked on here. Photoshop's not going to flatten them down or throw away any data. It's going to save things exactly as we have put them. That's great because then we can come back in and make any changes that we want to even after we've saved off other formats. So this is really your master file and I recommend that you hang on to this. They're going to be very large files depending on how much stuff you put in here. They could be several hundred megabytes a piece. But in my opinion, hard drive space, especially with external hard drives, is cheap compared to losing something that you've worked on for hours upon hours. So that's my opinion. And the first thing we're going to do here is go ahead and save. So file, and save as and we're coming into our directories where we want to save things. So you remember from our introduction 
and we're going to actually create three brand new folders that will sit inside of whatever our main digital scrapbooking directory is. So we're going to save our PSD file, you can see it's a little extension right here, into WIP. Now if you'd like you can actually create different directories in here for years or however else you would like to kind of name things and see where they are. I'm just going to save mine as the same name as we opened this with, up and running, quick page 01. The important part here is that it's a PSD. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. It grinds for a little bit. 